guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am doing my mid-year bias check. I'm going to go through my stats with you guys and we're going to talk about areas that I could do better because I'm just human and sometimes I just want to read trash. Uh, but that's not exactly so great for being a well-rounded reader um, and getting the full experience of writers and creators around the world. So we will get into that, uh, but just know I do try really hard uh, and I'm not trying to call anyone out. So if your stats don't look like my stats, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, no shade is thrown. We all have our weak points and we all have our biases. So the only way we can fix them is if we, you know, keep track and then we try to do better. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I just want to preface this by saying that I will not be talking about uh, star ratings, genres, type, age, range, release year, uh, bought versus library versus borrowed, or format. Those are stats that I keep for myself, but I think they're largely irrelevant uh, in terms of what I want to try and do better with. So we're not going to focus on those so much. Maybe I'll talk about them at the end of the year. Instead, we're going to talk about things that truly matter to me when I try to balance uh, what I'm reading. So first, let's talk about gender. I've read about 80-20 split between female authors and male authors, uh, with the 80 being female, 20 being male. And I've actually read no non-binary people this year, uh, which is a huge issue. Um, I was going to read The Deep for Queer Blackathon, didn't get around to it. I'm currently reading uh, Blanca and Roja uh, by Anna Marie McLemore, who is non-binary, but I haven't finished yet, so it doesn't count. Um, I've also picked up uh, When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McLemore as well. I'm thinking I'm either going to dedicate like a few different weeks or a few different weekends to reading voices, particularly from the trans and non-binary communities. Um, so I will just run through some of the books that I know I want to get to. Um, and these are all at my library, so uh, which is a bit of a problem because there was a recent pandemic spike, libraries are closed, but uh, they are right at the top of my TBR list. And as soon as the libraries open again, um, I'll be requesting them. So we have Gender, A Graphic Guide by Meg John Barker. Another one is An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon, who has an intersex non-binary trans main character, and the author is non-binary. When the Moon Was Ours, like I said, uh, by Anna Marie McLemore, who is a non-binary author, um, and then the main character is a trans man. Pet by Akweke Amezi, uh, who this has a trans woman main character and a trans non-binary author. The Future of Another Timeline by Annalie Newitz. This features a trans woman and non-binary main characters, um, and this is a non-binary author. I also have on there Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore, as well as The Weed of Feathers, um, and The Deep by River Solomon as well. The Prettiest Star by Carter Sickles. This is a newer release, and the author is a trans man. The Order of the Pure Mew... I can't say it! <laughs> The Order of the Pure Moon, Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. Uh, this has a trans main character. Uh, and then the last one here is Lost Souls by Poppy Z. Bright, although now they go by Billy Martin. Uh, this is a trans man author. So <laughs> these are all books that I am well aware of and I want to request them from the library when it reopens. And I'm hoping, like I said, to spotlight them because my answer to reading more and changing my biases is to deliberately set aside time, uh, whether it's a weekend, a week, or a month, where I focus on that area. Because if I just leave it to my own devices, the past years have shown me that I don't dedicate enough time and I don't read enough books to put a dent in the bias uh, skew. So next up, let's talk about race. Um, so the two kind of areas that I do are POC and white. For a POC rep, it is usually the author's background. So at the moment, this is sitting exactly equal 50-50, uh, which I feel really pleased with. Um, I have really tried to pick up a lot of books by people that are not necessarily white, and I think that I'm just really pleased with this specific result because in past years it has been nowhere near this. Uh, so this one I'm really chuffed with. I'm also pretty pleased with my queer rep. Um, so as it stands right now, I've read about one third queer and two thirds straight. Um, and while I would like to do more queer, 
Um, I am really pleasantly surprised by this stat because I tend to gravitate toward queer lit, so it's not one that I actively try to put in, it's just those are stories that I like to see represented. So this is more of a natural representation and I'm really pleased with the one third. Um, if I could get it higher, that'd be great, but that's not one that I'm actively trying for uh, because a few other areas which you'll see the next uh, three areas are sorely lacking. So I need to fix the areas that are coming and for now my queer rep is I think in a really pleasant level. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the areas that I'm really hurting and that make me look like an ignorant <laughs> fool. So um, the most painful one I would have to say is original language and it's English or other. This is, is the book originally published in English or not? And currently it's 95% English, 5% other. That is such a bad <laughs> statistic that I'm pretty much ashamed of myself, especially when just going through uh, my shelves, I have pulled off all the books that are translated currently that are just sitting there that I could pick up at any time, but I'm just a dumb hoe and haven't done that. So um, I'm just gonna run through them. So first let's start with like Asia in general. So we have Frankenstein by Junji Ito, Japanese. Land Cross Point by Matsutsugu Ono, Japanese. Almond by Won Pyong Sun, Korean. The Sea and the Poison by Shusaku Endo, Japanese. Spiral by Koji Suzuki, Japanese. And No Longer Human by Osamu Desai, Japanese. So obviously I have a Japanese skew in my uh, Asian lit. Um, I know this and I would like to remedy it, but for right now, um, I do just have a lot of Japanese because I freaking love Japanese lit. Um, it was my minor in university. I love it so, so much. So now let's switch over to like Latin uh, translations. So this is The Transmigration of Bodies by Yuri Herrera. I believe this is, yeah, Spanish. Um, a Legend of the Future by Agustin de Rojas, Spanish, um, and The Bad Girl by Maria Vargas Llosa, also Spanish. Let's do Scandi now. So I have Borderliners by Peter Haig, which is Danish, uh, The Forest of Hours by Kirsten Ekman, this is Swedish. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson, Swedish. The Electric State by Simon, Simon Stollenhag, Swedish. So the problem here is not that I'm lacking translated books to read, it's that I am, for some reason, just not picking them up. So I will be dedicating a whole month, probably, to translated literature. Um, and one thing I wanna highlight here is that if you noticed, there are no books from the continent of Africa. This is a huge problem uh, and I recognize it, but when I did research, a lot of the books that are out of Africa are either published in English first, um, which is totally fine, but if I'm looking for a book that is translated from a local African language, it's much harder. However, I have found five that are really interesting to me, but again, there's always an issue, uh, these books are often published by like indie presses and it's very hard to get a hold of them. Uh, I have managed to find some of them, but they're really expensive. So I'm planning to ask for them for my birthday in November. So I do realize that I won't be able to remedy the lack of African translated lit uh, for a bit, but I just thought I'd mention them here. Um, the Q by Basma Abdel Aziz. This is a dystopian Egyptian novel. Um, Bajo by Roland Muguero. This is about an adolescent mute who runs into trouble. This is published from Burundi. We have African Psycho by Elaine Mabenko. Uh, this is featuring someone who wants to kill someone else and then they're taken under the wings of a serial killer. Right up my alley. And this one is from French Congo, I believe. The Republic of Congo, French Congo. Um, we also have Kavina by Bobakar Boris Diop. 
Uh, this is a fictitious West African country where the leaders are in a bunker and an assassin has been sent to kill them. This is from Senegal. And the last one that I'm interested in is Transparent City by Onjaki. Uh, this is about a man who is in a city and he starts to go transparent. So I believe it's like magical realism. So of course, I am sure that there are so many more books from Africa translated from different uh, languages. I just am not that aware of them. Uh, if you have any that you think I'd like, please let me know. These are just ones that sounded like I would be interested in because I think a lot of time with translated literature, there tends to be a lot of um, memoirs or family drama sagas and or historical fiction, all of which are fine, but none of which are particularly my cup of tea. Um, as you guys know, I like darker stuff, I like queer stuff, and um, it's hard to find that in translated books, but especially apparently African lit translations. So if you guys have any suggestions, I would love to hear it down below. Um, but I really need to fix my 95% to 5% English other because that's just goddamn embarrassing. And I feel pretty ashamed because I knew that like at the beginning of this year, I was like, yeah, I'm going to read so much more translated. And uh, hasn't quite happened yet. Um, okay, let's get to another statistic here, which is book domination versus non-domination. So the US and the UK publishing industries are so strong that they often buy out other publishers, other book launches, other release royalties. The US and the UK are very strong uh, and you know, I try to read books that are published in other countries first, that are anywhere other than the US or the UK. So as you can see, I'll put the full breakdown here, but um, country breakdown, US is at the top by far, and then the UK, and then the other countries. But when you put it in US, UK versus other, it's 80-20. 80% US, UK, 20% other. I would really like to jack this number up. Of course, if I read my translated books, it does help me and I will, you know, be able to boost the other categories, whether it's Asia or Latin America or uh, Scandi, whatever I have will help, but there are other books which are published in English in other countries. So I'm just gonna run through those, um, and the ones that I currently have sitting on my TBR, I have Canada, New Zealand, uh, Nigeria, Ireland, and Australia. So those would, of course, count for reading a book outside of the UK and America. I do keep these on my shelves, which are up there. I keep them separated. Books that are translated and by uh, POC authors and also books that are from non-US UK. So I'm trying to like help myself as much as possible, not be a shit reader. So let's get into the littler ones first and then we'll go up to the bigger ones. So uh, for Canada, I have In Other Worlds, so these are science fiction essays written by Margaret Atwood. Uh, this is nonfiction, but a bite about sci-fi. So um, I think this sounds really interesting. For New Zealand, I have The Kindness of Your Nature by Linda Olson about a woman who finds a boy with webbed feet on the beach. For Nigeria, I have um, two by Chimamande Ngozi Adichie. So I have uh, purple Hibiscus and Half of a Yellow Sun. This one is in my July TBR, so can't wait to get to this. Um, I also have two Nnedi Okorafors in a series. So this is The Book of Phoenix by Nnedi Okorafor, and this is Who Fears Death. Um, I'm really looking forward to both of those. Um, I think Nigeria has some like slamming uh, sci-fi Afrofuturism. Like I'm all about it, like bow down. It's amazing. I also have two from Ireland. So I have The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. This is a Little Mermaid retelling. Um, and this one I recently got in an op shop, so you're seeing it before I haul it. Uh, this is a thriller, The Ruin by Dervla McTiernan. This has crazy high reviews. And the last country I want to talk about that I have on my shelves that is in English, but it's outside US or UK is Australia. So as you guys know, I'm in Australia right now. Whatever country I live in, I really like to read the literature from there because it helps me, I guess, understand how people think. So I have a whole bunch from Australia. Um, I have a classic, On the Beach by Neville Shute. 
Uh, hilariously, I bought this in America and then brought it back to Australia. This is a dystopian post-apocalyptic that's set on a beach. Um, I have The Golden Child by Wendy James. This says, can bad children happen to good mothers? The Eye of the Sheep by Sophie Laguna, which uh, focuses on a young boy who I believe maybe has autism. And I have read this author before and it was really, really good. So uh, she wrote The Choke and it was really good. So uh, I really can't wait to get to this one. I also have a collection of poetry. This is White Teeth by Ray White, who is a non-binary Australian uh, poet. Um, I can't wait to get to this either. It's so short and it would be non-binary. Like, I'm so dumb. Why haven't I picked it up? Um, I also have Dog Boy by Eva Hornung about a young boy who is raised with street dogs and then is tried to be brought back into society. And I'm not sure how it goes, but it sounded really intriguing. I also have Ghost Girls, which is about a teacher who realizes that some of her students go missing and are murdered, and she decides to become like a detective to try to figure out what has happened to them. We have Boy Swallows Universe, which has uh, won every single award ever. Like these are all these are all awards, won all of them. Um, it is about a young boy who becomes best friends with like a drug dealer and also is going to try to break a family member out of jail. So it sounds really good. I've just been really intimidated because it's won so many awards. Do you guys get that way? Where like I'm I'm nervous because it's supposed to be just so amazing that I'm like, what if I don't like it? And then the two I have left here are Neverland by Margot McGovern. This is a Peter Pan retelling with mental health themes. And then the last one I just picked up the other day, haven't hauled it yet. This is Asylum by Heather Tyler. So she's the editor, I believe, and this is uh, stories from people who have sought asylum in Australia. Um, so I think it will be really hard hitting and I hope that it's really, really good. So yeah, all the books that I showed you, if I read them, all of them, then my translations would boost, my countries outside of US, UK would boost, you know, and I would like to read more non-binary. So those are the three areas that I'm like kind of a dumb hoe right now with. Uh, I need to not read books in English originally, need to read books from countries outside of the US, UK, and I need to read more uh, non-binary people. So yeah, that's me exposing myself to you. <laughs> Let me know how you think I'm doing. Um, recommendations are always welcome. And also, if you watch this video and you thought like, hmm, I never thought about that before, that like, you know, it's important to think about where the book is published and where it comes from, uh, maybe, yeah, think about it because the US and the UK is just so dominating everything. Uh, that it can be really hard for other presses uh, and authors from elsewhere to really gain footing. So uh, definitely it would be great if you thought about it, maybe bought a few books that are outside of your comfort zone. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> this is that video that uh, I was really nervous about filming because I try to do my best, but then also sometimes, you know, I'm just human. And sometimes I just pick up five USA English romances by women with no queer rep all at once. And you know, I try not to, but sometimes that's just what I want to read. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you think I'm doing well, if you think that I could do better, um, and also what you think your weak points are. And if you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and send me a few heart emojis down below <laughs> so that I know uh, you think that I'm not totally the worst human garbage ever. Um, and I will chat to you guys in another video soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.